Hello. Neil Tyson, the director of an auditorium in New York, and some other Western scientists have condemned the great Muslim scholar Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, who lived between 1058 and 1111 in Baghdad and Damascus, for causing the decline of science in the Islamic world. Here is a short clip from the talk given by Neil Tyson about some achievements of the uh, Muslims in astronomy. Sacked libraries and Baghdad, and you, there'll be explanations. What they tend to leave out was another force at work, and that was the efforts of this man, Al-Ghazali, who's a Muslim cleric, who was to Islam what St. Augustine was to Christianity. What he did was he took all these ways people were practicing um, Islam, put them together, codified it, said, this is what you need to do to be a good Muslim. Okay, just as what Augustine did, which included how to, how to exactly burn the witches, that kind of thing. So it was all in there, it was all in there. And in there was the statement that manipulating numbers was the work of the devil. And that cut out the kneecaps of the entire mathematical enterprise of that period because he gained cultural power and political power with his philosophies. And you know something? Islam has not recovered from that since. And I'm sorry to say that what Tyson is telling us is incorrect. Al-Ghazali never stood against proper science and has never taught that mathematics is the work of the devil. And I challenge Tyson to provide any document belonging to Al-Ghazali that contains such a statement. It's well known that Al-Ghazali wrote a very advanced book uh, refuting the philosopher's approach to divinity. He formatted the book in a form of uh, a dialogue presenting arguments of the philosophers responding to it in refutation. He called this book The Incoherence of the Philosophers, in which he discusses the questions uh, related to natural philosophy and divinity, defending at the same time the Islamic views uh, uh, and refuting the philosopher's views. The book is in Amazon.com. Anybody can get it. It is translated into English and can look through that. As far as the mathematics and geometry is concerned, Abu Hamid says, let us read what he, what he says. He says, regarding mathematical uh, uh, sciences, there is no sense in denying uh, uh, them, he means the philosophers, or disagreeing with them. For these reduce in the final analysis uh, to arithmetic and geometry. This is from page 11 of the incoherence of the philosophers. In one section of the book, Al-Ghazali questioned whether the universe could have been created larger or smaller, or smaller than what it is. He investigated this question rationally and concluded that there is nothing against such a possibility already at that time, you know. He is actually conjecturing that the universe could expand and could contract. Al-Ghazali went further to call for treating the time and space on the same footing, confirming that space and time both had a start. Al-Ghazali says, let us read what he says. He says, and just as the proof for the finitude of the dimensions of the body prohibits affirming 
a spatial dimension beyond it, the proof for the finitude of the motion at both ends prohibits affirming a temporal extension before it. Then he says, there is no difference between temporal extension that in relation to us divides verbally into before and after and spatial extension that in relation to us divides into above and below. If then it is legitimate to affirm an above that has no above, it is legitimate to affirm a before that has no real before except an estimative imaginary one as with the above. In fact, Al-Ghazal is saying that because he has already showed that the universe has no outside, can't have an outside, and he says when we talk about anything outside the universe, we mean its upper self. As for appreciating the achievements of astronomy, and in order to show that it is in no way in conflict with religion, with Islam, Al-Ghazali discusses in page 6 of his book the question of uh, lunar and solar eclipses, where he says, in paragraph number 16, on page 6 of the Incoherence of the, of the Philosophers, he says, this topic means the solar and lunar eclipse, is also one into the refutation of which we shall not plunge since this serves no purpose. Whoever thinks that to engage in a disputation for refuting such a theory is a religious duty, harms religion and weakens it. For these matters rest on demonstrations, geometrical and arithmetical, that leaves no room for doubts. But when one who studies these demonstrations and ascertains their proofs, deriving thereby information about the time of the two eclipses and their extents and duration, is told that this is contrary to religion, such as individual will not suspect this, he means science, but will suspect religion. The harm inflicted on religion by those who defend it in a way not proper to it is greater than harm caused by those who attack it in the way proper to it. As it has been said, a rational foe is better than an ignorant friend. So I would say now, with all respect and appreciation to the talk given by Neil Tyson, in which he tried to be fair for the Arabs and Muslims, I would hope that he will not be then an ignorant friend.